The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Thursday, the 25th of May. We're looking at the Dow down 51 at 32,750. Making low lows and lower highs. Very simple. I said this arch formation that becomes a double arch like a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. Takes out the left side low of importance. That's 32,937, beginning of May. It has three bars in which to close above it. This is the second day. Uh, we've got one more day to go. And if it does close above it, that says, all right, now it can rally, but it can rally probably to the midpoint of the whole range. Um, let's just deal with it uh, a little later on. Right about now, I want you to just cover as much as I could to say that I mentioned uh, earlier on that um, – in my newsletter and also when I, I typed into the den, I said, this is first opening salvo. you got the, the short covering, the short covering, the short covering, the short covering. And then you still get some brand new buyers. But with NVIDIA's spectacular earnings report yesterday, it's making it really select that you're looking at the um, artificial intelligence area um, as something very, very special. It's a growing, it's, it's, I think it's very short term. I think it's extremely overbought. That's not uh, to say that the semiconductor area that uh, that uh, feeds into that, like an NVIDIA, uh, can't benefit, keep benefiting. I'm just saying on the very short term. So we've got early morning from last night's big spike up throughout the night. You just kept seeing higher, higher futures in the S&P and the NDX, especially the NDX. Then this morning at the open, you get the people who either had options or this is the real market. So this is where you see the flurry of activity up. Actually, let me just give you this. This explains it perfectly. Here's, here's the uh, e-money contract. So the 120-minute chart, sorry, the 10-minute chart right here shows you that yesterday, it was a peak D in the Chapman Wave. We're always looking for peak D, the fourth highest peak, because that's where other things can happen. Sometimes you can get a parallel high where it just by a fraction misses going to that extra penny to go, in this case, a quarter point, to go to leg D. So it's called the peak C1, C2. It has the same uh, effect, and you see a pullback. Um, so you've got your peak D at 2, was it 2.30 yesterday in the afternoon, Eastern time, at 3 o'clock. Then you had an hour of selling. And then at 4 o'clock, just before you started to get news about different um, uh, NVIDIA and what was the other one, Snow, was it? A couple of uh, important stocks. There was a low that was made at 41.35.50 at 3.50 in the afternoon. And then we saw a steady rise above that peak D and it went to a peak C1 and then a C2 where it was an exact parallel high. You go into... 41.56.25, pulled back with three bars, retested, you went to 41.56.25, exact high. So that became a peak C2. You saw the MACD turn down sharply. The stochastic was fabulous, and then it just crumbled below 80%, went all the way down to about 22%. But look what happened. You remember I spoke about this? Uh, I've been speaking about it for a long time. It's at least a month that we've had 4148 as the midpoint of a particular narrow rectangle formation. I said, I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to make it thick. I'm going to make it a dashed line and blue. And let's just keep it there and see how long it lasts as an important barometer, a, a, a midpoint, a kind of a, a magnet, then a propellant, then a repellent, and it keeps coming back to that area. Well, lo and behold, I'm just going to expand this what is it looked like a wide, but now it's a narrow rectangle between 41.30 and 41.50. And look what happened. That 41.48, right there in the middle. Let me expand this a little bit. Uh, there it is. Look at this. Peak E yesterday at 5 o'clock. Comes down 10-minute chart, pulls back. And then it has 
all of this activity within this range, this very narrow range, look at that. Well, it was kind of wide at the time, but then it ran, because of the time, it became a long, narrow rectangle. Well, it turns out that it isn't exactly the midpoint, but it's very close to a midpoint. The 4148 level is still the barrier and the support. And look how we've gone the yo-yoing above and below, and now we're below, and now it's going to be really, at this particular point, I'm considering it to be very strong resistance. So what did we see? We saw weakness yesterday going into the close. Then we saw, a little later, we saw the NVIDIA uh, come out with very strong earnings, and it's actually the outlook that was amazing. It pops up to about 41, uh, what was it, about 52-ish? Let me just give you the exact figure. 41, sorry, 58. And then it pulls back, and it holds this 200-period exponential moving average. Remember, I always say, Keep it there. You don't have to use it until you need it. Well, it became incredible support coinciding exactly with the 4148 month-long trend line, horizontal bar uh, or line. And then it went peak D, pulled back because there was, in fact, a peak in the one-minute chart, peak E right there. Oops, no, it was this one here. Peak D, we pulled back 10, 11 points, and then it held and it ran again, peak A, peak B, pulls back, goes peak underneath it, it goes gray A, gray B, gray C, and then a, a D, and it pops to an E, and that was it. Look at the way this thing, you remember how I talk about the stochastic, I, I spent hours and hours and hours over the last uh, couple of uh, uh, months, especially, talking about what happens when the stochastic is over 80%, what happens if it pops up and then fails? Well, that's what you see here. So it comes down. I did do these uh, the Fibonacci's here, uh, but look what happened. You ran up. You're making the lowercase h that's now gone to a lowercase m. Uh, the way these things just repeat over and over without taking out the left side low. Even now, I think we've just gone maybe 25 cents below it. This is really important. So now you've got early on, you've got one session. Then you've got the session that goes into the open. Then you've got the session that goes to 10.20, where we are right now, no, 10.30, we've got seven minutes to go. And the rest of the day is going to be really important because the real players come in now, right now. And that's going to tell you, oh, it did go to a leg B in the 10-minute in the chart, which had, oh, I didn't finish my story there. So the 10-minute bar went to the peak C1, C2, held beautifully, and then it spiraled up to a D, did pull back sharply, and then after nine, it ran up to peak E, peak F, and that corresponded exactly there with that peak E at 9.03 or something like that, and plunged down. So I'm suggesting to you that there are two, we are talking about a bifurcated market. Well, look at this. You see the lowercase h that goes to the lowercase m? Well, the general can't lead without the troops. And the general has been failing. Uh, I should go to this chart right here. The general has been failing. That's the Dow. With a lowercase h, they went to a lowercase m, and then took it out very sharply. Had to repeat over and over. That's a daily chart. The one I'm looking at right now is, right here, the one-minute chart. Had to repeat. So we better see that 41.35 holes on any pullback yet, otherwise, the high of 4150 is going to be a tough one to break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So this chart right here of the one minute e mini is telling you that we're trying to find support in the 4140 level. We've made one arch formation. We've made a second arch formation. We just nicked the left side low and that just says to you that you've got to be somewhat careful but buying is coming in, and that's important because, as I said, we've got the Dow and the NDX are just on two different planets completely. But at the same time, aren't we talking about the, the reality right now that we've had this huge move to the upside? Um, and at the same time, we've got the potential for the market to really take it uh, take a beating if the, the, the whole – the whole budget, I, you know, I, it's not necessarily, we don't know if it's conflagration right now, but there is no harmony there. There is no decisions. Um, there's something going on. And if you go on vacation, are you good to take a break? Woohoo! Got a week to go. We going to just, let's go away. Um, if you're going to deal with it in that way, uh, it means that the market still has some trepidation there. So there's a market aspect to it that says, is this reality? Are we not, uh, shouldn't we be a bit cautious? Surely the Dow is telling us a lot more. But then on the other hand, the real world is saying, no, wait a minute. There are areas that are doing very well. And that's the reason why I said to subscribers, we've got to be, we've got to have a split personality here. So the reason why We've stuck to a particular area, and I, I had a question about this. So just let me let me. I'll talk about it just briefly here. I mentioned it yesterday. For instance, bots. Bots is the Global X Robotics and AI ETF. We've been in it for quite some time. Today it made a recovery high. All-time high was way up in the 40 area, plunged down to the 17s, and now it's at a 26. Uh, let's see, 26.82, broke above. The high of a, a couple of days ago. So, this is now an alternate count because there was an instant restart there that peaked D, a G slash C. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is <clears throat> I want you to show the joke. We are still long the diamonds from way back in October. We've had fabulous trading positions, short and long, all the way up. We actually have stepped aside for about a, a week or, or two not doing anything on the long side or the short side, but that was a dumb move. Why? I say dumb. 
I'm trying to be as specific <laughs> as I can, um, because in my work, when certain technical indicators are there, take them. I mean, that's the idea of a technical indicator, and I never did, because I, I had this split market, this bifurcated market that said, wait a minute, there's still strength in the Qs, there's still strength in the S&P. So right here, as the nine-period moving average crossed uh, the uh, the fourth, the first of the May was 34,257, the high, in the, this new recovery high in the Dow, and then you had a sharp pullback, a big bounce, and then it turned the, the nine-period moving average cross negative. And I should immediately have said, SDOW, where you've been before, you've got to take it because that's your rule. The MACD's weak, the stochastic's weak, weak, and look at this, peak A, this is three times long. You don't have to get a big position, but it's just nice to put a small amount of money with a bigger leverage, and uh, it's just a nice way to do it. A, B, now, these things don't necessarily always go to D, E, or F for a major top. Um, they can fail at a B or a C because they are the inverse of the, of the core long. But at the same time, just look at this. Uh, that was an F. I meant to put an F right there. I said a D, but it's an F right there. Let me just change that. F, okay. So isn't this interest? Isn't this interesting? 200 period moving average, where is it right now? At today's high, 28.03. And where are we now? 27.93, holding very, very well. But it has a tendency to fail. I mean, this is the inverse of the, of the Dow. But isn't this a nice move? Going from the 24s to the 27s, uh, three points, it's so what, about 12%? Missed it. I missed it because I was looking at other things. And I did not take the indicator. Pity. I mean, it's just nice to be able to trade what you see, as, as Larry Pesavento always says, and I did not do it there. But however, look at this. In the bots, the BOTZ, which is in the area in demand right now, I think that's about to change. I think we're getting very overbought. I think that's about to pull back. This is from the 17 area in October. We haven't yet doubled. I usually look at these very important um, stocks or ETFs that when they're on fire, when they're in, in the sweet spot, they invariably double. Well, this is not doubled yet, but it's a really nice move uh, going from the October low of 17 now to today's high of 27. Uh, we're in 21, um, sorry, <coughs> 24. And um, so this is a nice move, but it's... It's just one sector. You haven't got that. If you look at the uh, XLC, which is the communication sector, we were talking about that yesterday. The daily chart and weekly chart are moving up quite nicely. Um, but look at that monthly chart. It is still way off the 86 high that was made back in 2021. Um, comes down sharply. So not all the sectors are moving. If you look at the XLE, XLE, look at that coming off the high, kind of struggling right now. Look at the crude oil. Crude oil, I'd say the lowercase h to the lowercase m for me is a pattern that I've, I've followed for so long, I cannot ignore it. I think that that's what's happening with crude oil. I know there was a lot of talk that crude oil was about to spike much, much higher. And I thought, okay, that's a possibility, but not the way I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the lowercase h. They can go to a lowercase m, and that's exactly what we're looking at. It could still go higher, but it hasn't done that yet. And if you look at the uh, weekly chart, it's just back in this big rectangle there after that Chapman Wave Roman candle, which so far is successful, it hasn't broken it. So I'm just saying sector by sector by sector. Look at the VIX index, VIX.X. <clears throat> big rally yesterday. And today it's still at 19.53. It's down 50 cents, but it's near the high of yesterday's candle. It's almost in the middle of yesterday's candle. What's going on? When you talk about a split personality, if I was looking at this and I saw that the VIX index was here, I would say S&P uh, over the last two days must be down 60 or, or more. But in fact, it's held very well. 
So that's what I'm saying. If you look at the SMHs in the den, uh, mentioned, uh, Duffy mentioned the SMHs, look at that. Good breakout. Um, the weekly chart, I've, I've got this as <clears throat> a price time match. There was a chance yesterday that if we didn't take out the low of the, uh, let me just, uh, I'll do it in a moment, uh, on the SOXS, the short, um, that that whole area in the 16s would be support, but we actually have gone a little lower. Where is it right now? It's at 15.40 something. But look, here's the semiconductor weekly chart. 142 was the high back in about March, April of last year. And it can go even further back to January, but I like to go one step at a time. So 142s is the target on the, on the, on the right side in time. Oops, I need to move this one little bit further. And it says by July, yeah, by July, we should be getting to the 142 area. And yeah, we are at 137. I'll be back in a moment. Basel Chapman Dow down 71, SB is down 18. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So a couple of questions came in, and I said I would deal with them. Uh, one was, what was that stock you were talking about yesterday, uh, just towards the end of the show, uh, that you have for subscribe that subscribers have <clears throat> that was doing so well? Uh, yeah, that was... SYM, which is symbolic, made a new all-time high uh, today. And I had an E slash C, which has now gone to a D. Now it's fulfilled everything it's required in the, in the Chapman Wave methodology. Look how many Ds. There's your peak D. 
pulls back. That was back in March. That's where we went long, <coughs> excuse me, in the 21 area. It ran to 32.17. We took a little bits off. Um, and at that peak D, it pulled back sharply, started a new move up, and today is another leg D. So it's got one D, two Ds, and this is the third D. Got to be a little careful here. But look, this is the weekly. I did this as a, um, a left side. I really, I wanted to only show this, not necessarily to show that we had it, which is important, but just the patterns. So it's made this beautiful cup formation, left side, right side price symmetry. That is bar symmetry. Um, 2848 was the high on the 24th, the week of the 24th of June, 2022. Midpoint was the low of 875 on the week of the 18th of November. And now it climbs up, climbs up. I had a Chapman wave inside wedge target resistance line that went right. You could see it right there. And that was on the week of the 14th of April. When it went above it, it went to 30.29. Pulled back at the peak D. That's where you often get your sharpest pullbacks. Boom. Pulls back. And then it made a leg E to the upside <clears throat> this week. And it's still a leg E. It becomes a peak E if there's no new high. But look at this. 28.48 was the high of June 2022 after the 9.01 low that was made uh, that same month. And then it pulls back to 8.75, brand new low, and that starts the new move up. So this is long term. This is in play. That's your peak A. It should still go to a peak B, a C, and a D. Doesn't tell you when. It just tells you that that's chapter wave notation because the stochastic's running sharply. MACD is good. It's your first big leg up. You can even pull back all the way back to 24 um, and still be in this big buy mode. But it's only the start of a move. So that's what I want to. The question was, what, what, why did you like it? I like it because it's in the symbolic ink, end-to-end -end AI, uh, robotic warehouse automation systems. It, it's just, I said to subscribers, I think it's in the sweet spot. And we'll see. I think it's going to be a little overbought right now, but look, the stochastics at 88%. That's good. MACD is good. Price is way over the nine period moving average. Nine is way over the 14. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that just to show you that this, as I said before, this is a very split market. So a question came in about, Zip wondering about FTNT. So this, <coughs> excuse me, that's Fortinet Inc. Cybersecurity making a beautiful cup formation in the monthly chart. And I can't, you know, I just, I never, ever remember what it is. It just doesn't sound, well, now it does. Now that I'm saying 45, I guess 40 net. I never thought of it that way. I, I kept thinking it was a banking type stock. But this is, this is one when I looked at Hack, which is the, we, ha we haven't got it. I keep wanting to have it. Instead, we bought bots and we never got into Hack. But Hack, which is, the cyber, this is the prime cybersecurity ETFs. Uh, it's just look at that monthly chart. It's horrible. How come it hasn't been so successful when everyone needs security of some sort? I just, I, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm, mis, I'm misunderstanding what these things do. But it just seemed to me that some of these stocks, are PANW, Palo Alto, that's, that's really on fire today. So there's the cup. It actually looks very much like um, Fortinet, and uh, that's that's one of the better ones. Gone to a leg D in the weekly, had 213.16 all-time high back in 2022. Today's high is 208. It's very close, five points. It can do that in the blink of an eye. Uh, I wanted to put a D there. So, yes, just this is what I'm saying, that don't be afraid of the market, but you have to be very se selective. So this is this a brand-new A? and a brand new B, if that's the case, there's a chance. I'm, I'm going to say this even though it's really hard for me to believe what I'm saying, but the chart is saying that because of the selectivity that we've got here, regardless of what's going on politically and economically and what the Fed, uh, Fed chairman says and what the uh, uh, Yellen says, some of these charts are just kind of ignoring all that. And that's important to note. So that means don't be afraid. Go to something that's acting well and then just put your stop in. If you're wrong, you're wrong. What's the big deal? Just to take a little bit of a loss and that's it. You're out. You can always come back in. Um, so that's what I wanted to point out. So the question came in 
what was it that we're talking about? That's what I was talking about. Next question came in Fortinet. So let's go back to that. Fortinet is um, a cyber cyber security stock. Now, here's something that I need to talk about. There's a pattern. Some of you have been with me a long time. Remember back in October. July of, 20, of 2009, I had what I thought was a sell, a sell signal, but I said, I, I can't remember now if the S&P Weekly was at a peak C, and I said, I, something's not right. No, it wasn't. It was, uh, I can go back there. But whatever it was, I had a signal that said, we're in, oh, that's right, one of the, the technical indicators was still strong, even though the price pulled back. And I said, I don't think this is it. I think we've got one more rally. And then we had another, another rally, and I said, there's a pattern that I look at that is what I call, uh, it, it's like an M-shaped pattern in the MACD. It's like, a, a, it gives it a, another bump. It, it rallies, and then it comes back, and then it suddenly rallies again. And then often I've seen it go to either an E or an F, after the D pull back sharply, oh, it's an E, and then it goes to an F and a G. And at that G, that's where you get your turn down. Because watch the stochastic. If the stochastic drops very sharply immediately after making that second peak in the second arch formation, be careful. Well, Fortinet saw the stochastic beautiful up in the 85 percentage area. Now it's at 69 with the price pulling back. I'm going to say to you that from what I'm looking at, Fortinet looks like it's making some kind of a shorter term top and that if it takes out 60, it's at 66 right now over the next two weeks rather than go to 73, which would be above the high that was made a couple of days ago, then it says it's having a sideways move, a consolidation phase. And that's what that would mean. So the numbers are real clear to me. If by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, I, I, I want to give it a couple of days. There's a rally that can take it even if it just rallies to the uh, 67, 80 level. It's a 66, 814 right now. Rather than this, at this particular point, the day is young. It's only an hour and a quarter into the session. This is a chapter with Roman candle right here. If at any point in the next couple of days, for an hour and a half, if it trades under 66, 60, it'll retest today's low of 64. 45, and that would confirm that that is that it's like a right arm extension failure pattern, almost like the Eiffel Tower, straight up and straight down. So I'm watching that. So if you're in it, that's if you're in lower down, I would just say as a longer term position, I think it's holding really well. As a shorter term position, there's some volatility coming in, and those are the parameters that I would I would be looking at. If you want to add or you want to go into the position fresh. I, I need to give it until Tuesday of next week to see where it is before I do anything like add or starting a new position. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's down 70. S&P's up 23. Nice, uh, nice divergence there. Now, a uh, natural gas. Another reason why I, I've, I've been speaking about this: crude oil and natural gas just seem to me to have the same modus operandi. They they attempt to rally and then they just cannot hold them. They get back into the trading range. So natural gas now is down at 2.50. It's down 0.06. It made that peak C. I said very, very good action. But if it pulls back more than below 2.62, I think I said, um, that's way too deep after a peak C. And it just says it's done. A, 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 the weekly chart, it just needs so much work to 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 have. I need to look at this. The MACD, the technicals have improved so much. The MACD is good. The weekly chart, the S&P made an ictus low right there in the unbalanced volume. It's rallied strongly. The stochastic's gone from single digits. I think if I remember correctly, this was at about 3%. Let me just check what this is. This is the, um, it was much lower. Way back, it was down in the four point. Uh, 3.7 area, and then it went down to right there. Where is it? 2.96. So, I mean, that's pathetic. And now it's a 22, and you've had a fantastic 10, yeah, what a 10 fold rally almost, a nine fold rally. And yet, look at the price. The price can't move. And I've said something about this that, that to me, I don't understand at all. But everything about it said it looks like oil when it went down to minus 40, you remember, in the futures, there's something wrong. Either there's a glut or there's just something not right about the actual the way the contracts are traded and the way the flow of natural gas, uh, maybe it's pipeline. I don't know what it is. Something's wrong because normally you would get such an oversold condition that this spike that occurred just in the beginning of May from the 220 area, we should have had that peak C right there, maybe two days, one day, but maybe two days of rest, just briefly. And at this point, you'd be at 2.98, 3.15. That's the way I would look at it. That to me, would, and this is not good. So if you just put it together with the crude oil, look, crude oil, same thing. It, it just, it got off that low, a really good spike from the low in the 64-ish area, 63. It sprang all the way to the 74s. I mean, that's a big move. And then it just stalled. So something's going on here. And the weekly chart is really not very good at all. So I, I, that's out of, out of the way. Let me just go back to gold. Uh, gold, and I, what, what I said is if it breaks the 1948, 1946 low, today it's already gone to 1939, there's a real good chance that the next step is 19, 19 I think I said 1922, to this 200 period moving average of 1915. That's kind of my target. That's the area that you'll start to see it form a base and try to rally from. And if it can't hold, it's not good. So put it together with silver. And I mentioned silver had led the way in the last big move up. And then it stalled. And then gold caught up. And then they both the double top. They're using the Chapman Wave uh, cup formation, using the left side test of the right side 
uh, follow through shows you how weak it was on the right side at the same level. That was a very big negative. Now you're under the 200 period moving average in silver. The weekly chart, I have to call this a potential peak F right now. Um, this is, this is, and it went back in the monthly chart. It broke out how nice it was to see it above the trend line for the first time. Even with a matching time move, it couldn't get through with a cup and the second cup. Lower highs, low, lower lows, and then it broke out, but it couldn't hold it. So that says, and I did platinum yesterday. Let's see where platinum is today. I was negative on yesterday. Today it's up three at 1,033. It did the one to one to the downside. I still have 10, 10, 10 as the uh, 200 period moving average target here. And here's your left side, right side uh, test. Look at that. The technicals here in the beginning of January or so of this year in the weekly chart. Very, very good. And then it went to a higher high with not as good a we uh, technicals and technicals are now weakening. So I wanted to do that. I wanted to show you high grade copper HG. High grade copper. Was that question that I missed over there? I think there was. Um, yes, I'll get to it in a minute. And there was another question over there. Uh, yeah, QQQ is in leg A, gray leg A in the monthly chart. I Good. I hope I remember to do that. I want to do it before uh, this segment finishes. But look, high-grade copper, trying to – look, this is the weekly chart. Chamway falling exclamation went right to the support. It's trying to hold it, but the technicals are still very weak, both in the daily, the weekly, and the monthly is doing the dreaded H pattern. But it is at a peak C. It failed at a peak C at the high back in 2022. So I'm watching copper to say I'm putting it together as I always do with wood, the iShares Global Timber Forestry ETF. Had a big spike, peak A, peak B, peak C. How important is that D? Well, let me, I don't think I can do that right now. There, I'll do it over there. So that's the low that was made back in March. Here's your peak A. A. Here's your B. Very sharp pullback in the arch formation, but it never took out the left side low. That's a good sign. It says you can rally now. Towards the previous high. So what does it do? It goes peak A, peak B. This is all underneath that peak B. But it goes to a C underneath that B. And here's your D. Gap up B, D and a pullback today. And look at the monthly, a weekly chart. So even that says, together with copper, that internationally there's probably a slowdown that's been occurring as, as we, we look at it. And therefore, you've got to consider this. When I say bifurcated market, you've got the tech stocks in another world. They were in another world on the way down with the general market and the Dow was acting well. Now it's switched. I love the rotation. Rotation says you don't have to crash because you've got other sectors that are taking over. Uh, just uh, one quick question here. Oh, oh the QQQ. Uh, so that just says wood uh, needs it's 70.75. If it, it closes under 70, it does an m shape retest and that's not very good. And the weekly chart is not particularly good. One, two, three. QQQ. Yeah, this is a gray A. And you can see the month we've still got how many days to go? Today is um, the 25th. We've got tomorrow. We've got two. We've got three sessions to go before the month wraps up. And so far, this is a wonderful candle. And you've got the month is young. Anything can happen. But at this particular point, you've got the nine period moving average over the 14 for the first time in ages. L says long. And uh, the MACD. Oh, it's so close, 0.65. Uh, it is so close to crossing positive, but it hasn't. That'll be the first time it's crossed positive since it broke down about um, uh, January. Uh, January, I think it was. Maybe February, February of this year. Uh, February of last year. February of last year. So that's going to be a big deal. And look at this, the weekly chart. I had the target of 334.42 for last week, uh, the week before. It didn't do it. It did it last week, and this week it, it has extended leg G slash C. I hope I covered that for you. Yeah. Oh, wait. I didn't finish what I wanted to say. This is a gray A. I have to wait for all these technicals to confirm and then to actually see the uh, the, the crossover of the MACD nine-period differential over the 26-period moving average. I want to see that wide. If the wider the crossover, the greater the chance. Just like look how wide the MACD has been here. And it's been, just been a beautiful move. Um, I'm not going to do it now. I don't think I have time. Um, I was going to grab this. Uh, let me, no. um, so this is a gap up leg. Gap up and then recovery high. 
That usually gets filled. Not all gaps get filled, but gaps like this do get filled with something. I'll be back in a moment. Bowser Jeff from Dallas Down 17. S&P is up 26. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, let me just get to these questions quickly. So yesterday, thank goodness I didn't see it. Michael wants to know, I've got advanced micro devices. I think for, uh, it's done so well, I, I've got to lower it down. I, I think it's, is it time to take a little bit off? I didn't see that. But I saw it last night at about 10 or 10.30, and I said, I sent him a note quickly say, oh, thank goodness I didn't see it. But at the opening tomorrow, yes, that's your opportunity, a gift. You know, when you, when, you, when you go to sleep and then you wake up and something happens fantastically and it's a gift, you got to take that gift. It was saying to you, you didn't have it yesterday. Now you've got it. Take something off. I, I you know years ago, I remember Tom O'Brien used to say, Take your take take your family take your wife out to the uh, what was it to that fancy hotel or something down in, was in the Tampa area uh, when you've done, done real well it's that rewarding and that's really and so now Michael takes something off next question was um, so GT says uh, going he's got puts on the FXI oops I typed in the wrong place don't run out of time I want to finish this up FXI FXI is the uh, large cap. China, yep, that's the one. There's the dreaded H. Exactly. Looks the weekly looks like the uh, the daily and the weekly looks like the Dow pulling back sharply here underneath the left side low. Uh, final question is, um, what was that stock? Uh, where was it? 
a stock that you did. I'll do this tomorrow. It's IOVA. And this is a stock that um, I we had. I'll talk about it tomorrow. It was one where we lost some money. And then I missed getting exactly what I wanted um, because I had the target of, of the left side high. And then I said it should go to a D. This is how, the, oh, the question came in. How important are peak Ds? He has a peak D at 9.36. Uh, three days ago, the stock trading was 735. That is one big, uh, big sell-off, right? 25 percent. So I, I treat these with a great deal of respect. I'll do a lot more tomorrow in my show because it's Texas Friday, um, uh, and we'll do more traveling notation. Have a wonderful day. Watch out if the Dow, uh, sorry, if the S&P pulls back to only a plus eight late in the day, that's a problem.